in my utter coolness, I turned the camera off by wiping my keyboard clean. I'm a genius, I know. Alright, stuff, talk about stuff. Um, I've been, I'm doing something, I remember this word from high school, and I've been doing it lately. Um, it's called metacognition. Thinking about thinking. It was quite a discussion that day, and very interesting idea to think about how you think, um, how your mind works um, when you get in certain situations. What does your mind tell you? What do you hear? What do you not hear? Um, and this has come up because of a recent, I guess, person in my life, I guess. I guess it's a person. It's a person. It is a person. It's not an invisible person. Um, I started back in the summer seeing a th therapist, um, and she was this really old woman, and she sucked, and after four weeks she let me go because of financial reasons, but I'm not really sure that's the whole story, but I'm just gonna believe it's financial stuff. Anyway, it took me about a month to get up the courage to want to see somebody else. Um, I was seeing somebody when I was undiagnosed, but I haven't seen anybody since then, and it's really hard to stay with somebody, um, because it's so hard for people to get me, and even more so now to get who's behind the, th the character that I play, um, I don't think I even know most of the time, um, because I spend so much time being this character, this person who people want to see. Because people don't want to see um, the part of me that is ill most of the time. And I don't blame them. Um, I talked about reading the document um, I have when I lose my memory. And one of the most important things on it, when I talk about people, it's that um, I tell myself it's okay to lie to people. Um, to tell them you're okay, that you're good, that you're fine. Because the honest truth is people don't always want to know the truth. Um, and I think that really, really bothered Jackie to read that. And it bothers me to read it sometimes too. But, but it's very true in our society and with the majority of people I know. Um, at least in real life. On here, people want to know how I really am most of the time. And I appreciate that. It allows me to take part of the mask off for a little bit. Anyway... So I started seeing a new counselor, therapist, I guess, I don't know, um, almost a month ago, three weeks, I don't know. Um, she has a couple things in her favor. She's not old. There's nothing wrong with old because, um, believe me, um, I have um, a lot of older people in my life that I have a lot of um, respect for. But... Um, she, um, has a sense of humor, and that's important, whether she's old or not, but that's important, the other lady was missing that. Um, she's pregnant, which normally would be, um, kind of a, a plain factor, do you know what I mean? It wouldn't count for or against, but she gets extra points because she's a pregnant lesbian. Yeah, that's cool, right? In the town I live, that's really cool. Um, and she's just, um, been very accepting of my very dark humor. Other thing, since the first time I've seen her, when we sit down for a session or whatever you call it, no mother fucking paper. She doesn't sit there the whole time and write. On this piece of paper, which keeps my mind from working against itself. Because when I know somebody is writing, the character I play changes. Anyway, so I went Monday. I will go again a week from today uh, because of Labor Day. Anyway, but I've been thinking a lot about this depression and this end of an era thing that I was talking about before. And depression is a pretty big issue. It runs in my family. Um, I remember stuff with my dad when I was younger about it. And um, 
and now I see a lot of the similarities, which is weird, because I just don't associate with my dad at all. Um, for a while, he was just listed as sperm donor in my cell phone, if that gives you any idea of the level of respect we have for one another. Anyway. So, thinking about this thinking, and, and why this is so hard, and why letting go of this inanimate object is so difficult, and why why we put our ideas and on these kind of inanimate ob objects within our lives and um, and how easy it is to do that um, and then how hard we have um, how difficult of time we have letting go and it's interesting to think about why it's hard to let go of these things um, and why it's hard to let go in general I think we're taught to hold on as tight as we can, as long as we can. And when we can't, we don't like it. Just as people. Um, and a lot of times we hold on to things that aren't necessarily good for us. Um, relationships or friends or um, ideas of, of in the past or whatever, that are not good, that are toxic, that are dragging us down, that we don't even realize until we've let go how much better it is without these things. There's a lot going on, and, um, this takes me back, I guess, to a really interesting part of my illness. Um, I always want to talk about it, but I, um, always have had a really I get chills, and it's kind of freaky, but it's it's impressive. Um, I saw I was seeing somebody for acupuncture, and they were doing um, it was a Chinese medicine doctor. And afterward, I was getting a massage, and it was making quite a bit of a difference. And um, she was like, "I want you to see this other doctor we have." And he was um, it was, it was a black guy, but he had an African accent. Um, I think he actually grew up in Africa and, and then studied to be a, a doctor of Chinese medicine, which he, I think he lived in um, China for a while and then he came to the U.S. So he had quite a thick accent. And he did this weird thing. I saw him on two occasions. <laughs> he did this weird thing where he, he talked about how our, your organs are like a neighborhood. And how when the kids, are, when, they're, when you're really young, your organs speak to each other really well. There's a lot of communication. And as you get older, your organs stop communicating as well. And he claimed that what he did was um, kind of restarting the communication of these organs. Interesting, right? Just interesting. And I was like, okay, I'll keep it open mind. So he does, th he does this. And on two occasions, he pulls up. A name and a situation that I never spoke about to anybody in the office. And it scared the crap out of me. It was like, he was like, you know, like, it was Cleo or something. But he said something, and I won't ever forget it. He said, the only reason we are ill is because of our in inability to either accept love or to give it. And I thought, if I was in a better place, this, this would be important. But I can't be here right now. I will come back to this. I know I will. And I feel like now's the time where I'm coming back to it. Take care, you guys.